Joining us here at ASH 2011 in San Diego, California is Dr. David Vesol, an MD and PhD. We'll get into that later. John Thurr, Cancer Center in Hackensack, New Jersey. He's got about 73 or 74 abstracts here, I think, don't you? I can't count as high. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, let's talk about two of the ones you do have. The first one is a study of prolonged infusion of carfilzomib in patients with relapsed and or refractory multiple my myeloma. Carfilzomib is a next-generation proteasome inhibitor. It has a much better toxicity profile than the currently approved proteasome inhibitors that's commercially available. And we have seen in early phase studies, of some of which are being updated at this very meeting, that this is an active agent by itself, and it's also active when it's combined with other chemotherapeutic agents. Of the two abstracts specifically that I'm referring to, one of them is taking carfilzomib and dose escalating it to see A, is it safe, and B, does higher dose result in a better outcome as far as response rates. So we did this study of dose escalating over twofold the standard dose that's being currently applied for for a fast track application of the FDA and we treated a number of patients with this higher dose and we found that yes A it was safe with minimal toxicities compared to the lower doses and B that we actually did get higher responses with the higher dose of the drug. So instead of a 40 to 50 percent response rate we actually saw response rates of approximately 60 percent in that patient population without losing anything by reducing dosing due to toxicities. So we think this is a very promising finding and actually the current trial is to expand at a higher dose to a larger cohort of patients to see if the preliminary studies hold true as far as the safety and efficacy with that drug dosing. What else will you do on the next phase? So the next phase is being expanded and the question is are they going to ultimately apply for an indication if they get the first indication for a higher dose of expansion to see if that is efficacious. But bottom line is very few of us are ever going to use the drug as a single agent. Almost no patient is treated outside of the clinical trial in real lifetime with single agents. We use combination therapies. So the other abstract which was we find very, very interesting is combining, combining the same drug, carfilzomib, with drugs that are already approved for the treatment of myeloma, which includes lenalidomide and dexamethasone, and giving the three drug regimen to newly diagnosed patients. And in this phase one, two trial, we saw response rates that are essentially 100% with the triple therapy. We saw durations of responses which are equal, if not superior, to what's already been reported with a the, the approved proteasome inhibitor, which is bortezomib, in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. So this regimen is at least equally efficacious as the older regimen, and there's less toxicity associated with the new generation carfilzomib proteasome inhibitor. So what do you do next with these combinations? Everything's being done in combination. So, you know, the, the issue is where are you going to apply this regimen? Is it going to be used for up, upfront treatment for newly diagnosed people? Is it going to be used in the relapse setting? Is it going to be used in consolidation after high dose therapy with autologous stem cell transplant? It's essentially going to be used in all different steps of the treatment of the patient. So the treatment steps are induction therapy, usually with transplant for those that are transplant eligible, consolidation, and then some form of maintenance. And this drug is probably going to be fit into all four of those different steps of the management of patients with myeloma. Speaking with another doctor earlier, and it leads me to the question is, what do you think it would take for doctors to change the mindset where you could just use a single agent as opposed to combination therapies? To change them to use a single agent? It'd have to be unbelievably potent as a single agent without any toxicities, you'd be able to, you have to deliver a higher dose of the drug, which is the first part of the discussion we just had, a higher dose with higher efficacy without losing anything on toxicities for people to do single agents. But bottom line is with most malignancies, there's multiple pathways that need to be attacked, and the way you attack multiple pathways to ultimately prolong survival and potentially ever cure a patient is by using different regimens that attack the different pathways. So single agents are really not going to do that. Thanks for your time. I know you're a busy man. You have lots to do here. <laughs> but thanks for your, uh, 
your time and your attitude, and it's been a nice experience having you with us. We hope you'll come back. Thank you very much. Pleasure okay. to be here. Dr. David Vassol, MD and PhD from the John Thurer Cancer Center in Hackensack, New Jersey.